Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say, if there ever was a cereal designed to boost a family's breakfast morale, it's new sugar crinkles. Why, that sugar rice treat that's just right sweet makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Come breakfast time, just pour on milk, and you've got a breakfast main dish as you like it. Those golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice we call sugar crinkles are really special. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that don't seem sweet enough. Sugar crinkles really are the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And whether you eat them from the bowl for breakfast, from the pack as a snack, or both ways, you love sugar crinkles. Try them soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. One thing about Dodge being quiet like this, there's time for fishing. Ah, beer, steak, and catfish stew makes for a good supper. You two are going to be sick, stuffing yourselves that way. Well, now, Kitty, Chester spent all day catching these fish. He's got a right to eat what he wants. I've heard of people who go to bed with an aspidity bag around their necks when they eat too heavy. I'd rather be sick. <laughs> oh, it, it's not so bad. Once you're used to it, it kind of lulls you to sleep. It, more coffee, Miss Kitty? I know, thanks, Chester. Late. I better get back to my place. You're a good cook, Chester. Oh, say, thank you. Yeah, if you ever get tired of the law business, Chester, maybe you could get a job at Delmonico. <laughs> the regular customers might get a little tired of catfish stew, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Kitty. I'll walk you back. All right. Uh, will I see you in the morning, Mr. Dillon? I'll be at the office early, and I want to ride out to Jim Redigo's place and look at a horse. Can I go with you? Uh, sure. Maybe you'll see something you'd like to have. Uh, we'll leave early before it gets too hot. Good night. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Miss Kitty. Good night. place is going to look kind of nice. All them trees growing up around the house that way. Yeah, he's done pretty good in a year's time. Of course, it's a long way out of Dodge. Now you need space to raise good horses, Chester. Yes, sir, I know, but it must get mighty lonesome out here. I don't think that bothers Jim much. Looks from here like his corrals and cat's pens are empty, Mr. Dillon. Well, maybe he's moved his horses out to get the last of the summer grass. Mm. You got any special horse in mind? Well, the last time he was in Dodge, Jim was bragging up a sorrel stud he's got. It might take $30 for him. Well, well good horses come high, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, let's pull up here. The horses will stand. Quiet like, isn't it? Jim? Jim, ready to go. Maybe he's not here. Well, he can't have gone far. He didn't even push the door shut. I guess he won't mind if we go in and boil up a pot of coffee. There's a pot already on the stove. It looks like he was just about to fry up some side meat. Mm. Pot's full. Now, Jim must have spent the night away from here. The stove's cold, Chester. 
Well, maybe he had early this morning. Now, this stove hasn't been lit for longer than that. A man doesn't leave side meat lying uncooked in a skillet. Mm. It sure don't figure, Mr. Dillon. No. I ain't armed, mister. Don't, don't shoot. What? Don't shoot me. Nobody's going to shoot you, old man. Well, come on in. I, I seen you right up. I was hiding out back. Well, who are you? I'm Jed Cuff. What are you doing here? I work for young Jim Redigo, but not anymore. What are you talking about? They come riding up and they killed Jim. Two nights ago it was. I was hiding, but I I got hungry and I come in to get something to eat. Redigo's dead? Laying dead against the water trough out back. They shot him. Can I eat something? Who shot him? The men who come to take the horses. They killed Jim and then they run his horses off. Jim tried to fight him, but it was two of them against the one of him. Well, I thought you were here. I run away. I was scared. Cold coffee is better on the empty stomach. He's plumb out of his head, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Uh, old man. Jed Cuff, that's me. Well, show us where Jim is, huh? Uh, I ain't a brave man, mister. I I run away from all them guns. That's okay, Jim. You'll just take us to Jim. Out back. That's where he's laying. I'll show you. But before he died, mister, Jim killed one of them horse thieves dead. He's laying out here, too. You think this old man's telling the truth, Mr. Dillon? Well, as straight as he can remember it, Chester. It's just that he's old and not very bright anyway. There he is. There's Jim. And there's the other fellow laying right where Jim shot him out of his saddle. Uh, Jim was a fine boy. But I was scared, and I ran out the back way and hid where they couldn't see me. Jed. Did you know these two men? Had you ever seen them before? No, mister. I never. Now, uh, Chester, see if you can find the shovel. It took less than an hour to bury Jim Redigo and the other men. When we were through, Jed put a sort of marker on each grave, and we went into the house. Chester and I found some food in the cupboard, and we fed the old man. Then we started him for Dodge. Happy enough, astride an old donkey, we found grazing free behind the house. Then Chester and I watered our horses, and a few minutes later, rode away from the Redigo place, following the two-day-old sign of the stolen horses. About sundown, we saw a long column of riders moving towards the north. What do you think it is, Mr. Dillon? Well, it could be cavalry out of Fort Larned. Or maybe Indians? Or Indians. If it is Indians, we ought to get out of here. Now, they're riding too slow to be a war party, Chester. Now, it's Indians, all right. Cavalry wouldn't circle that way. Then we're going to go right up to them? Well, if we can... Hey, look, they've stopped. Yeah. How many of you figure there are? Um, uh, maybe 60, 70. Might be a whole Indian village on the move. If it is, they're not looking for trouble. I hope not. Now, they're waiting for us, all right. Now, when we get up to them, keep both your hands on the saddle horn. Yes, sir. All right. Heads up. Yes, sir. Sitting there, looking at us. They'll talk when they're ready. I 
I am Quick Knife. My name is Matt Dillon. My braves and I have watched you come. You are looking for the white man. That's right. The white man sold us horses. Our squaws ride them now. He stole those horses from another white man. We bought the horses with gold. He killed a man when he stole. You have come to take back the horses and punish the man. Yeah. Uh, the horses you cannot take. The man you must find for yourself. The horses are ours now. There are two of you. And many of us. All right, Quick Knife. Uh, what about the man? He left the horses with us and rode west. His name is Tebow. How long ago? Not long. He knows someone is following him, and he is afraid. His trail will not be hard to follow. Thank you, Quick Knife. Chester. They're going to Don't look back. Well. Now, what were you going to say? Nothing. Only they're still just sitting back there on their horses, Mr. Dillon, watching us. Yeah. I was just a mite scared. Was you? Yeah, I think maybe I was. Well. <laughs> Are we going to track Tebow now, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. We'll track him, Chester. And we'll find him. If your family is getting weary of the same old breakfast cereal every morning, time to retire it and introduce him to new sugar crinkles. Say, new sugar crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And I'm here to tell you sugar crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. Golden crisp nuggets of sugar-coated rice and every nugget in your breakfast bowl just right sweet. Forget your experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet and with others that don't seem sweet enough. Treat yourself and your favorite family to new sugar crinkles at breakfast time and snack time, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be baked. Sugar ice cream that's just quite sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. As a snack from the pack, oh boy. Can't be beat. Just right sweet. Sugar crinkles good to eat. Now back to gun smoke. Soon after we left the Indians, night came, and we couldn't track Tebow any farther. The next day, we rode hard, following his trail towards the west. The prairie stretched out gray and green before us, and several times out on the horizon, we saw puffs of dust rising. We knew Tebow was somewhere ahead of us. He must have been riding a good animal, because when dust came, we hadn't closed in on him. It was dark when we spotted a nester's cabin and pulled up. You think maybe he's hiding out in there, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he could be. Just keep your eyes open. Well, but who knows? We can't track him at night. Don't you think maybe he'd just keep it going? Well, any man's got to sleep and eat sometime, Chester. Yes, yeah, sir, that's true. I thought maybe we could get some food and water our horses. Who are you? My name's Dillon. We don't have many strangers out here. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Well, I've got some tater soup work. Well, thank you. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. How do, ma'am? 
You just sit at the table there. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, you're a long ways out here. We was headed for Colorado Territory. We never made it. You're a widow woman? No. It's just the boy that died. Maybe that's why my man and I stopped here. He built this place. Here you are. Ah, thank you. Say, this is real stout soup. Where is your husband? Hunting. Uh huh. Well, night hunting's a pretty poor thing, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes the body don't have much choice. When will your husband be back? You're asking a lot of questions, Mister. Well, I told you I'm a U.S. Marshal. People have good luck and bad. Ours has been mostly bad. Yeah. I'm looking for a man called Tebow. I don't know him. Why, well, yours is the only place we've seen. He came this way. My man's name is Kirch, Abe Kirch. We don't know anybody called Tebow. Ah. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Kirch. We'll water our horses and get moving. Get moving. Thank you, ma'am. It was mighty tasty soup. You're riding on now, ain't you? Yes, that's right. You can water your horses right out there in front. Good night. Good night. Well, one thing, she wasn't too talky of a woman, at least. Not living out here so long, maybe she's lost her habit. Yeah, maybe. This cussed buckskin can drink more water than a Texas mule. Yeah, they've had enough. Yeah. All right, let's ride. Okay. Oh. Oh. Mr. Dillon? What? I can't see no doggone tracks in all this dark. Never mind. Yes, sir, but how are we going to see Just where... Just ride and be quiet, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Got these horses hobbled. Oh, I think they'll stand, Mr. Dillon. And I want to make sure they do. Yes, sir. And then we'll walk back to the Nestor's cabin. Walk back? Well, what in the world for? That woman said her husband was out hunting. But there was a sharps 50 leaning in the corner. A man doesn't go hunting and leave his gun home. All right, come on. It could be Mr. Kirch took another gun with him. He's too poor to have another gun. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know, but there's something wrong back there, Chester. His wife was mighty anxious to be rid of us. Usually it's hard for a traveler to break away. The people are so hungry for news and a little talk. I guess that's right. Yeah. Now watch where you put your feet. Yes, sir. It only took a few minutes to make our way back to the Nestor's cabin, where a pale light showed through the chinking and under the door. Some 30 feet short of the cabin, we stopped. We could hear voices inside. I motioned to Chester, and we stretched out flat against the ground, and then inched our way closer. Now we could make out it was a man and woman talking. One voice was Ms. Kirch, and the other was either her husband or Tebow. Hey, Who said that? He ain't hurt bad. There's blood on his face. I hate him to keep him from talking out. You come around. I got rid of those two men like you told me. Is that you, Said you wouldn't hurt Abe if I did that. Him? Wait a minute, Chester. I just hit him on the head. Now, shut up. We ain't never harmed nobody. I did what you said and not... I... I told you to shut up. <laughs> you open your mouth again and I'll fix your husband good. <laughs> Get your food out all on that table. Gotta have me something to take along. <laughs> Chester, he's busy now packing up that food. Crawl around to the back of the cabin and then make some noise. What sort of a noise? It doesn't matter. Just so he knows somebody's out back. I don't know yet. I'll get going. That's fine. 
You take all that? What we gonna eat? Go hungry. Those men here were the law, weren't they? One man said he was a marshal. They've been following you. You must have done something bad, real bad. I killed a man who talked too much, woman. And I just... Oh, no. Someone's out back. Please, don't shoot me. I'm going out. Don't you make a sound or I'll come back for you. All right, Tebow, drop it. What? I can see you, Tebow. Drop your gun or I'll kill you. Well, now, uh, hold on, mister. Let's, uh, let's talk a minute, You huh? can't shoot at my voice. Now, drop it. No, I won't. Dylan? Yeah, sure. Kind of too bad you had to kill him. But then they'd have hung him for a horse thief anyway. Yeah. And he killed Jim Redigo, too, Mr. Dillon. Forget it, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, we better get into the cabin. There's nothing we can do out here. We did what we could to make Kirch rest comfortable and then sat up half the night talking to his wife about uh, Dodge, the railroad, stores, all the news a woman would be hungry for. And the next morning early, Chester and I started on the ride back to Dodge. It was clear and bright and we made good time, Chester riding along feeling mighty proud. The nester had said he couldn't feed another horse, and so Chester was trailing his own buckskin and riding the big red stud that Tebow had been using. Yeah, Chester was mighty pleased with life. And Tebow, who'd stolen the stud a few days earlier from Jim Redigo, was buried out on the prairie with stones piled on his grave to keep off the coyotes. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. If you want to be a real good scout, Mom, tell you what to do. See that your whole tribe sits down to post toasties for breakfast in the morning. What a way to start the day for every big and little Indian in your wigwam. You see, post toasties are heap good cornflakes, spankin' fresh, crisp, with that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted right in. It's a feather in your cap to serve them. Sure, because Post Toasties are not only the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post Toasties are the best thing that ever happened to breakfast. And say, if you want to make a good thing even better, add your favorite fruit to that bowl full of Post Toasties, sugar, and milk. Mmm, it's mighty delicious nourishment. Get Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes, next time you shop. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Norman MacDonald, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Helen Cleave, Ralph Moody, James Nusser, and Paul Freese. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, tries to prevent mass murder during his fight to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Post Toasty, the heat good cornflakes.